Welcome to Just a Printer. I'm Dan. Today I'm going to talk about buying used equipment. A couple things I look out for and a couple rules of thumb for deciding to, well, to lowering your risk uh, when, uh, when you're buying a used piece of equipment. So basically every piece of equipment in here I have bought used except for three pieces. Bought the 1200 new, I bought the 3070 new, and I bought my D&K laminator new. Uh, bought the laminator new because nothing else, you can't find that machine used. Uh, it's only a few years old, so I was basic, I needed to buy that new if I wanted that technology of that laminator with that footprint on my floor. Buying used is a great way to get your foot in the door for a fraction of the cost. Uh, like this 1070 here, like I paid like a sixth, a fifth of what a new one would cost. And that means I get my money back a lot faster and it's more profitable. So today, I'm after I'm done tabbing at these newsletters, I'm gonna go pick up a used uh, 3070 that I just bought and I'm going to kind of go through how I made the decision to buy that and why uh, and hopefully it'll end up being a good decision. Okay, so if you remember just a few months ago, I bought this 1070 uh, and it's been a good choice. It's really been great to have extra capacity and servicing it myself saves a lot of money. So I have two color machines in here. I have a 3070 and a 1070. So why would I need a third machine? Uh, just to name a few. The parts on that 3070 and this 1070 are interchangeable. So I could use this new machine as a parts machine. I Meaning I could just pull parts off it to keep this thing running whenever something fails on here. Um, the other reason is capacity. I mean, I I'll be another machine if I choose to keep it running. Uh, speeds up so I would be able to get three times as much printing as one machine another reason I got it was price the price is really good I'd be kind of a fool not to buy this uh, that kind of dictated my offer I don't really need the machine but for the right price certainly I'll take it okay so this 3070 that I'm gonna go pick up has five million impressions on it I don't know how many years old the machine is. Uh, it's probably three, maybe four years old. Uh, I'm not really concerned about the click count, and that's because uh, the wear items uh, should be replaced and are replaceable. So, as far as I'm concerned, a uh, you know a machine with five million clicks on it, you know, still will run for years. Uh, and will also make a good parts machine. And with a digital press, I basically always consider those consumable items to be, need to be replaced from day one. So that helps me figure out how much I'm willing to pay for a machine. So I don't know the percentages on the drums, wires, transfer belt, fuser. I don't know that, but I'm just gonna assume that they all need to be replaced. So if there is life left on them, that I'm ahead of the game there. For me, what makes a huge deal on any piece of equipment that I'm buying is how much I trust the seller. And I gain trust from the seller by having good communication. And I mean, that means you need to list out everything that's being sold and ask all your questions and figure out exactly what is being sold before you make an offer on that. And how I did that was basically tell the seller, take photos and list out all the, everything that's being sold. Uh, is the rip included? Uh, what's the click count? Uh, I didn't ask for uh, the consumable percentages, uh, but I mean, I wish I would have that. Um, but I do know that the machine was serviced by a Konica technician uh, up until, well, me purchasing it. So. I'm assuming that the machine is in that good of condition, and that to me means a lot. Uh, I'll often, I feel comfortable buying a machine without even looking at it if I know it's been serviced by a professional. 
if you are going to look at the machine, just look how clean everything is. Even not the machine, but the work area around the machine. If it's nice and clean, likely, they took care of the machine and that means it's gonna be a good choice to buy that machine. If the thing is beat up, I'd just be a little bit more skeptical. Another good thing to do is list out what is actually all being sold. Uh, is toner included? Any consumables? Uh, if you're buying other equipment, stitching wire, adhesive? Because uh, I made that mistake once. Uh, when I bought my Perfect Binder, I think four cases of adhesive was included in the sale and I forgot to get the adhesive uh, and it was in North Carolina and I'm in Pennsylvania so by the time I realized I forgot it I was states away and well the seller isn't going to send it to me uh, and but they didn't even get back to me but either way I should have made sure that I had all the parts when I went to pick it up. Another thing is don't rush take your time because Whenever you're in a hurry, you're going to forget something and you're probably going to regret it. So uh, if somebody's pressuring you to buy something and you're a little uneasy, follow your gut. Don't do it. So another cool thing, this uh, 3070 is going to come with an IQ501, uh, which is the technology that I previously spoke out against because Konica makes decent machines that you don't need that. Uh, apparently that is broken. Uh, and the uh, current customer does not use it, but it, sh it could be an easy fix, who knows, but it will be neat to actually have that and be able to look at it and play with it, potentially. That's if I keep it, because the reality is, is I might just flip it and sell it uh, to somebody that wants to, to run it. Um, so how I figured out what I want to pay for this thing is I looked at other machines and what people are asking for them. So. I looked on eBay, uh, Craigslist, basically wherever I can find a 3070 for sale with around 5 million clicks on it. Uh, I didn't find that many, but I know the machine will retail for maybe 50 to 70,000. Uh, and I know I just bought an older machine for 9,000. Uh, so that brought me to, well, it's a newer machine than this one. Uh, so it's probably worth more than the 9,000. However, the, the machine I'm going to buy has 5 million clicks and this had 1 million clicks. So that to me brings the price down further. So realistically, I think this 3070 is probably worth seven to 10,000. Uh, but I, I don't really need it and I didn't really necessarily want it. Uh, it's it's work to go rent a truck and go pick it up. So to me that became a little bit less uh, So I made a really low offer. I offered them two thousand bucks and they took it. So I'm gonna go pick it up and we'll see how uh, how it works out Now I'm gonna need to tear this machine apart and I really think I only need this Phillips screwdriver, but I can't in the right mind just take one screwdriver. It feels wrong. So I'm gonna take a flat head and an adjustable. I don't think I'm gonna need them, but I feel like I should at least try to be a little more prepared. Don't worry, I also have toe straps and moving blankets that I plan on using uh, when I fasten everything on the truck. So to the post office to drop off that newsletter mailing, picking up a rental truck, driving to pick up the copier, bring it back here, get my truck, and hopefully I have a good feeling about it after I see it and it's here. So basically broader than just digital presses, you need to be aware of the consumable items. So knives, blades, heating elements, uh, rollers, anything that wears, uh, you just need to expect to replace these things. Feeding rollers, belts, uh, 
gears, chains, uh, those are the things that you're going to want to look at and uh, analyze to tell how much life is left in it. Uh, and, you know, if it's a, a good looking piece of equipment and it's something that you really want and it's going to make a big difference for you specifically, then you offer what it's worth to you. Uh, if it's uh, a decent looking machine and you don't really need it, like as I was in, you offer something low. And you offer, you make an offer that you're happy with uh, if you win it or if you lose it. You know, I'm willing to pay X amount of dollars. If I get it, that's a good day. If I don't get it, that's fine. Um, so that's, that's basically how I figure out what I'm willing to pay for a used piece of equipment. Uh, and that, that changes. It changes with my business. It changes with uh, uh, what the piece of equipment is. So uh, that, that's, that helps me narrow down a number to offer. Oh, it's a nice rainy day. Good day to move equipment. down twice it is a lot cooler today than the last time I had to move one of these so take this home take the truck back and uh, investigate what we got I think uh, I think it was a pretty good deal I mean I'm assuming that all the consumables need to be replaced but once I do that I'm ready to rock and roll oh, unless unless I just use it as a parts machine which I don't know I'm gonna have to sleep on it for a little while or if you got a good idea just let me know so I was right. The seller said the machine's uh, three to four years old um, and they don't know how to service it. So uh, the contract ended uh, a while ago, I guess, and they ran it until the quality was not acceptable. I don't know what, uh, what they consider unacceptable quality. I mean, it could be something as easy as it just needs wires or something, but uh, that's right down my alley. Uh, so. Yeah, go out there and find people that don't know how to service equipment and snatch these things up. They're uh, totally worth it. And I think at 2000 bucks, this thing's a steal. Um, so I can't wait to plug her in and kind of poke around a little bit to see what's going on with it. some parts with it probably near I mean a couple hundred dollars certainly worth of parts that's nice now I just want to I want to wheel this over plug it in and just oh nice I got one of those anti-static thingies I could throw that in the 1070 if I if I want anyway let's plug this thing I just want to see what the meters look like uh, so I know roughly about how much I got to put into this to get it running and then I just I need to think and see if I want to if I want to keep it and run it use it as a parts machine or try and sell it I should also mention this is the IQ uh oh <laughs> the IQ uh, 501 I guess it is and uh, it'll just be neat actually just to look at this thing and see exactly what all is in here uh, but Apparently the previous owner, uh, I guess it stopped working and they just pulled it out and kept running without it. So that kind of affirms my previous statement that they're unnecessary and less is best. You know, it's less things to fix and keep running. Uh, I'm sure they're nice, especially if you have a really busy shop, multiple machines. Uh, but. I am glad I have this because now I get to kind of play with it a little bit and uh, you guys will be able to see that too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, paper feeder, relay unit, and stacker. So let's get this thing plugged in and uh, see what she does. My 
most convenient spot for some juice. I don't know if I can run her without the uh, relay unit and stuff. We will see. I don't know what that's for. That's a dongle for maybe the fiery or something? No. I don't know. Oops. Scanner's not connected. Six seven fifty six. I wouldn't be surprised if it's because I don't have the stuff hooked up to it. Let's uh, fire it up with the door open so I can go right into tech mode. I don't know if. Oh, there we go. Get in there. She looks fairly clean. Oh, I got the this door's broken. That's no biggie. I mean normal normal dirt. Goodness. I mean the this fusing unit alone is worth what I paid for it. Let's get into the... tech mode here. Why is this screen so dark? There we are. Uh, let's see. Counter. Parts. Let's So the Kronas are way past. They need to be replaced. I've got a drum unit here at 600,000. That needs to be replaced. So it needs Kronas and drums all the way around. Holy cats. There's a million on that black drum and the cyan drum. Uh, I'm sure the developing units are way out. Oh, they're not bad. 175, 173. Uh, that's really all I'd be really concerned about. I'm sure there's other, shoot. This machine is good to go, really. Five point one million, four point four color, hardly any black, goodness, seven hundred thousand black. I can't I just can I I I don't I I don't know. I I don't know what to say. There is no way that I should own this for two thousand dollars. I mean this is really nice. And it's gonna code out again probably because the relay unit and stuff isn't hooked up. Oh maybe not. Maybe that error just had to do with the scanner. It's doing its thing. Well shoot if it does the adjustment. I feel like I oughta at least put some toner on some paper. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, theoretically, this machine is newer, only three to four years old than the 1070. Even though this has five million clicks on it, I, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know what to do. I almost feel like I should 
uninstall the 1070 and put this thing there. I need something to copy. Might as well do a Uline catalog. Uh, da -da -da -da, copy. Let's do that. Full color. Yeah. We'll shoot. Okay. We got a hardcore line here. And some up here. These are just drum issues, I'm pretty sure. Which uh, makes sense. It just needs new drums and then she's ready to roll. Density's good. Uh, you know, developer. Oh yeah, that's fine. So I've been racking my brain the whole entire time that I've had this machine trying to figure out how in the world somebody would sell this for 2000 bucks. But I think the reality is, is I was just in a position where somebody didn't know how to fix the machine and just saw dollar signs. Uh, in reality, they're all routine repairs. So somebody, they were, they were so excited that I was coming to get this machine and take it off the floor to the point I was getting nervous. You know, I was, I paid them and they were like, oh, it's so awesome that you're taking this for us. And I'm like, what? Where I was like, oh my goodness, I just bought a lemon. I bought a boat anchor and I'm going to get this back home. And the thing is not going to be worth anything at all, but got it back home. And it, it, it's fine. It's going to be fine. But just goes to show if you can find somebody that does not see value in something, uh, you can get it for a really low price. I see a lot of value in that machine yet. That machine could easily do 10 million clicks, probably even more than that. But a person that does not know how to service the machine, they're going to see a boat anchor. And there's, uh, I mean, if she, if she couldn't sell that, she would probably have to pay a company to come in and recycle that machine, which is, I mean, I need to get into that business. That's, that's crazy. But anyway, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how in the world this happened and what, what bad is going to come of this, but I, I don't see anything wrong. There you have it. I didn't put a whole lot of thought into this video. I probably should have brainstormed a little bit more to give more tips about finding machines that are a good fit for you. Uh, whether it be finishing equipment, printing equipment, offset digital. Uh, this is how I buy used equipment and kind of the thought process that I go through to minimize my risk and maximize the potential of any piece of equipment that I bring onto the floor here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it works for me. Uh, it may not work for you, but at least you know how I do it now. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Look, twins. Well, these two get to reunite. <laughs>